What's up guys? It's been a long time since I've done an update. Um, I've got a few new things to bring up. One of which, just want to show you guys my newest tank, my newest addition, which is a Fluval 13.5 gallon Evo. Um, Fluval has kind of set this up to be one of the nano salt tanks. Um, I've done a few modifications to it. Um, I've got a wiring nest right now because I uh, haven't went to the store. We've had some snow here, so I went to the store and actually got me a uh, power strip, which will be coming this weekend and cleaning this up a little bit. A um, few things for people who are thinking about getting one of these tanks. One, um, I have a solar flare on the back of this right now because the light that I that comes with the tank had some corrosion issues, and I've got to solder that and fix it. Um, I got this tank actually used to my local LFS. The owner had this tank that he was using for a few things, and I got it for a really good deal, so I couldn't pass it up. I originally planned to use this as a hospital slash um, you know, holding tank for my fish before I introduced them to my bigger saltwater tank, but I had to kind of make a pull and put a few of my fish out of my bigger saltwater tank because I made a pretty big rookie mistake, which I'll go into here in a minute. Um, cool thing about this tank, kind of like the flex, you got a lot of back room um, past the wall here. So you got your pump over here, that's your filtration basket, and you've also got this area over here to do a heater. Um, or a media reactor or a protein skimmer. You've got a cutout here for a protein skimmer. Um, I put the heater over here because I'm not putting a protein skimmer in because right now I'm just running four fish and a uh, snail and a crab in there. It's nothing crazy and I'm doing pretty regular water changes so I don't really need a protein skimmer in this. Um, I had this left, I had one of these spare high door 425s so I've got it over here along with these two turnips to get some top water agitation and this one pushing the backside down so I'm getting good flow. Uh, four fish in here, the two Oscillaris clowns, one's a Miss Bar. Um, you can see those guys over there, they like to hang out by the power head. I've got uh, the one Nasera Snell here. I've got uh, my Mandarin Dragonette that's trying to hide, and then my Citron Gobi that's hiding right there. He is very much shy. Um, so, cool things about this tank. If you have not thought about getting one, uh, you want a peninsula style tank that will fit on a small stand on a counter, desktop, dresser, great tank. Uh, not very large, uh, it's large enough to do what you want to with, as you can see, you know, I've got probably about 10 pounds of rock in there, maybe a pound of sand, uh, two pounds of sand, nothing crazy. Um, plenty of space for smaller species, your dragonettes, um, your like your twin spot gobies, your smaller scooter blennies, um, your smaller dragonettes in general, such so like your red dragonettes, a citron goby, um, your smaller saltwater guys would do great in here. I'd say if you try to do any firefish or maybe like a smaller uh, Watchman Gobi shrimp combo, just make sure you have your hood on because they do like to jump. Um, since I don't have really big jumpers in here, I don't have a hood on here right now, but that will be coming because I'm going to take the solar flare off the back. So I do want to put coral in here um, and have a cool little setup. Great little tank. Um, really easy to take care of. Kind of like the Fluval Flex, which I'm sure you guys have seen my videos on the Fluval Flex update. Um, great little peninsula tank. I'm actually going to move this. I've got it sitting here for right now. I'm actually going to move this tank over and put it in this spot in the tank room uh, right here and run it long ways so people can really enjoy the peninsula style of it in, in its own setting and kind of in the corner here. Um, two things. One, my 54 gallon, which is what I've been focusing a lot of my attention on lately, uh, has had some issues. One of the issues is, is that I made a complete rookie mistake and I took my nice big canister filter down here, as you guys can see. I've got Aquatop 400 with UV, um, nice canister filter, really good setup for a tank of this size to, for as far as ease and for space because I don't have a lot of room to put a sump underneath here. Um, if you do guys have corner tanks or smaller odd shaped tanks. Made a rookie mistake though. Canister filter had been set for about three months. Um, had a good <clears throat> bacteria load going. Water parameter check every week. Water parameters in stock. Corals were f this flourishing. Fish were flourishing. Um, if you guys remember, I had um, I had tomato clowns. I had damsels. I had chromies, firefish, uh, a couple of um, little more rare wrasse species that I like. I was actually getting ready to pull uh, some of the clownfish and the damsels and the chromies out and put some more exotic grasses in because I really want to do a cool coral wrasse tank um, 
But when I cleaned my canister filter, I made the biggest mistake you could make. I cleaned it in tap water. Stupid mistake. Um, I cleaned everything in tap water and I made a horrendous mistake. That cost me all my fish, um, except for my citron good as I was able to save. Um, it's costing me a lot of my corals. Um, this five headed torch, I pretty much, um, pretty much lost all of them. I maybe have one head left of coral that's going to live, but I doubt it. Uh, lost several invertebrates, my Halloween crab, several of my turbos, my margaritas were dead. Um, as you can see, this torch that used to be very prominent is almost dead. The turbinary is making a comeback. The bubble is trying to make a comeback. Um, my gonoporia is trying. My zoanthid and star polyps, not so much. Um, I've been able to keep one fish in here, a starry blenny, um, to help me with my algae control because I had a massive algae spike, of course, with basically uh, recycling a tank with a full load of rock and fish in it and coral. I made a very stupid mistake, guys. Um, and I use this video as a, as a caution to not make these same mistakes. Um, use older tank water to clean filter material out to not waste your beneficial bacteria. Honestly, when it comes to your biomedia, I would not touch it ever. Um, I, I, I'm a little obsessive compulsive when it comes to cleaning my stuff and it costs me a lot with this tank. Um, as you can see, I do have some cyano build up on the back side here. Um, I've been trying to get the cyanobacteria down. I've been treating, I've been dosing the tank for trace elements for all my corals. I've been putting prime in to help reduce the ammonia levels, but I've been reducing my ammonia levels slowly. Um, if I hadn't had coral in the tank, I probably would have done a, a massive water change and added some seed or another beneficial bacteria and just let it regrow. Instead, I did 20% every few days um, and did uh, two or three large bottles of seed, which is, um, which if you guys haven't seen seed, let me show it to you. Seed is a, uh, seed is basically this. Um, it's Bacqua Vitro. It's basically an entire bottle of beneficial bacteria. Now they have two different sizes. They have this size, which is a smaller size, and they have one that's much larger. It's about twice the size. I put two of these bottles back in the tank just to get the tank to come back and it barely has helped. Don't make the rookie mistake I did. Don't clean your media with tap water. Um, you'll, you'll come out much better because no one wants to have to tear the rock work down as I did four different times to remove dead fish and inverts um, just to make sure that they wouldn't have huge additional ammonia spikes from dying animals. Um, I did change the rock work up a little bit on the tank. I gave some more cave and some pass-through activity for the fish when they'll be added back in. Um, I actually tried Sunday to add a Niger trigger and a pink spot goby. They last about a day. So my tank is still not ready, even though my water parameter checks are showing good. So this tank is going to get a lot more treatment. Um, so at this point, I'm basically down to two tanks that I can really work with. My Fluval 15, which you guys are probably pretty familiar with, I just did a water change on it. Um, uh, actually, whenever I do water changes, due to the amount of stuff I stir up when I, I clean the bottom, I will put some AccuClear in the tank, let that run for about an hour after I do the, the vacuum, and then I will take this water back out and do a kind of a partial water change again just to get the remaining junk out of the tank. Um, currently, this setup is running three Pristil Tetras, one German Blue Ram, one... Um, one red cockatoo, a uh, pistogramma, and then a, um, a solar flare, uh, a pistogramma, which is hiding back here somewhere. Um, I just got him today. The 13 and a half gallon has kind of been my real focus for the past couple weeks because it's the only thing I can really work with. Um, I've been dosing pods for my Dragonette on a daily basis. Now I can give some advice if you're going to do a tank, smaller tank, or do a tank with a Dragonette species if you're going to do pods there's two ways you can do pods you can dose pods in the tank bottle by bottle uh, feed phytoplankton or phytoplankton excuse me which i do uh, to encourage a population growth and then add your dragonette or you can buy several bottles of copia pods and daily dose which normally when i do one i will put an entire bottle in at night when the lights are off so none of the other fish will eat uh, with a dosing of phytoplankton and then <clears throat> introduce the uh, dragonet species. Once I do that, I will usually dose 
a quarter of a bottle a day of fresh pods into the system to resupply so that the dragonette can hunt because we all know it usually takes several weeks to get a, a decent pod population if you're doing a dragonette species. Now this tank will eventually be nothing but dragonettes. I'm going to take the Oscillaris clowns out, put them in my 54 gallon and put the Citron Gabby back in the 54 gallon to give him the room. But I do plan on doing some red dragonettes and a yellow dragonette along with the Mandarin and possibly even doing a red Mandarin in there too. Um, just because I want to do this little 13 gallon as a Mandarin tank or Dragonette tank, excuse me, a uh, Dragonette tank, and uh, have a, a really healthy pod population there to feed them guys with and just have a natural little ecosystem where they're picking off the rock and enjoying life. Um, I'm actually maybe able to get a good view of my Mandarin before he swims away. He is very shy, um, he runs as much as he can. And my Citron, if you can see, he's hiding right back there. He's hiding as well. Um, that will come with time. I hope this video will maybe help some people who have done rookie mistakes realize that, you know, there's a reason that people say don't do certain things and we think we can do and get around those things, but there's a reason why. And this is one of the reasons why you end up killing your entire tank and you have to start over. Nothing is worse than when you have a very established tank that's working great and doing everything you want and all parameters are in check and basically having to start fresh again. So hopefully this video will help people out. Um, I'm going to keep posting, guys. I'm going to start posting more often. I actually just got my uh, my girlfriend just got a BioCube. I found her a really sweet deal. BioCube 30 gallon for 40 bucks. Um, we've got that set up. She's actually got her first two fish in there, some fire fish with rock work and a uh, star pop. And we're going to get her tank going. So I'll keep updating on that. And my tanks. And uh, general reefing and nano reefs and larger reefs. I'm probably going to upgrade at some point. And go to 120 or 180 gallon to fit in between the 54 and the 15. And I'm basically going to turn this entire room. As you can see here. Uh, my entire dining room will be end up being my fish room. So if you guys have any comments, questions, post them up. Um, if you've made rookie mistakes too, post them up because honestly, this is how we learn. Um, you know, none of us are uh, none of us are exempt from doing stupid stuff. So just uh, post them up and let me know. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to hit in the comments or put a like out there or even tell their friends to watch the video if they want to get some info. I've got a lot of videos out and we'll continue to post uh, about new stuff that I'm doing. Uh, mistakes that I've made as a beginner and mistakes that I'm making now even after doing this for a year and hopefully we'll give good information so people can continue to make good decisions in their uh, in their hobby.